To make a difference, one must be the difference. This is Skull Babylon, and you're about to listen to episode 14 of Paradigm Shift Radio. With no special guests lined up for this episode, we kept the platform open for anyone in the community to take part in the live on-air discussion so that we can simply practice expressing ourselves and talking about the ideas commonly less talked about in public. This is a habit we are still getting in the swing of, and we encourage you to get involved with the next show and to add to the conversation. Topics on this show covered a wide range as we let things go where they needed to. Be sure to check out the new Plant to Seed video and picture project by following the links in this video, join PSR on Facebook, tell some friends, get involved, and enjoy the show. Shifting paradigms is my business, and business is booming. This is Skull Babylon, a.k.a. Brendan Wolfshield Culleton, and you're tuned into Paradigm Shift Radio, the new interactive show to assist in the evolution of consciousness. All right, guys, so right now we got about 20 people sitting in the live chat just within the first couple of minutes of the show. It's just standard uh, procedure, so to speak, in terms of Paradigm Shift Radio. Put the word out there. Get, uh, get your friends invited. Uh, get them tuned in. Get them in the live chat because the show is all about community orientation, which is pretty much what we're going to be doing tonight. As you, uh, if for, for all of you who have turned in, tuned in in the past, and especially last week, you know that we had a couple special guests on, whereas this week there's no real set plan. So I'm going to do a little bit of paradigm shift news to begin with, just bring you guys up to speed in uh, what's, new, what's new in the world of Skull Babylon and the Paradigm Shift London crew. And then from there, what I would like to do, I would like the first person uh, on the air with me who is, going to be, who is going to be calling in, whether it be through Skype or through uh, their actual phone number. And if they want to call in with their actual phone number, all you have to do is dial 347-539-5493 and uh, then hit 1 in the keypad and it will tell me that you're in the queue and you're interested in coming on air. But what I would like, first of all, after we do the news run through, I would like to hear some, uh, I would like to talk to somebody who's involved with a paradigm shift community of their own. So right now, the whole paradigm shift thing is that there's all these communities popping up all over the place. And just recently, if you go to the website, paradigmshiftcentral.com, there's a new global directory that has been added. So right now, that has all of the, all of the paradigm shift places, all, all the different communities located on a single page for you to view, and obviously that page is going to continue to grow, so the direct link for that, even for those who are listening to this live and uh, are, may or may not be, uh, you know, just if you want to look this up in the meantime, by all means, but go to paradigmshiftcentral.com slash directory, and uh, that will take you to the community directory there. So, moving on to what's new, well... Happy Equinox to everyone. Today is September 22nd, so this is uh, the time for change, the time for new beginnings, the time for new outlooks and initiatives and projects and tests in a lot of ways. So for those of you who have been uh, sort of following what's uh, been popping up in the Facebook feed, you'll know that I put up a new video this morning, which was called Plant a Seed. And basically, for anybody who wants to check that out, just just uh, go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash SkullBabylon, and there's lots of videos up on there. So making videos is kind of my forte. It's, it's something that I went to school for, something I've been trained in, and something that I, I, I use to help contribute to this whole uh, paradigm shifting business, as, as I said at the beginning of the show. And for those of you who saw the video, what it was, it was basically a few of my friends going, uh, taking some signs out to the street in a busy trafficked area in uh, in the downtown city of London, and basically on the signs just had these different thought-provoking ideas, and, and we sort of wanted to get people to open up their minds in different ways. So one of the first signs read, uh, open your heart, and then the second one said, as you think, so shall you become, and then the third one said, we are collective consciousness experiencing itself subjectively, which is Bill Hicks reference, obviously, but that was basically the idea, and then we documented the whole thing. So this is sort of a new project that I'm trying to get people involved with, with in a global sense. In the same way, for those of you who've been following the whole paradigm shift stuff, you'll know that with the last full moon, we had the once in a full blue moon project, which was basically encouraging people to get together as a community and take photos of themselves, interacting with the full moon, and then posting the the end product online in the group and just really it was all about expressionism you know it's just about coming together and uh, just knowing that there's all these people all over the world like connecting through this single idea and, and that's a really powerful thing so this is sort of an expansion on that in the sense that the basic idea is that we want you to plant a seed whether 
that be directly through signs or in some way or another? And this is fairly open-ended, so we're, we're, uh, we're expecting people to get creative with it. But the project for that, go to paradigmshiftcentral.com slash plant a seed. So P-L-A-N-T-A-S-E-E-D. So if somebody wants to actually add that, or I'll add that into the live chat as well. Obviously, for those of you who have known, who have who have been listening in the past, you'll know that I do have a co-host, uh, Michael Brazel. Though I'd just like to take a moment to mention uh, Michael. He's busy with the Paradigm Shift DC and a lot of stuff going on and everything. And uh, for the time being, he's stepping away from this project at least, but he's still keeping plenty busy. So go to blogtalkradio.com slash Michael Brazel. I'll put the uh, link in the show notes afterwards as well. And be sure to check that out because Michael's still doing a lot of uh, really important stuff where he is. So be sure to check out what he's doing. He's got about three other blog talk shows that happen throughout the week, whereas Paradigm Shift Radio is just a, a sort of a Saturday thing. But nevertheless, um, there will be uh, the very real possibility of a new co-host joining me in the future. So I'm not necessarily saying uh, send me your applications, but if you are interested, feel free to message me on the side just so I know in terms of uh, backup co-hosts and just so I can get a list because that would be a pretty cool thing is to, to sort of rotate through co-hosts and, and get people involved on, in the show on multiple levels. So uh, feel free to do that. You can uh, add me on Facebook. So facebook.com slash skullbabylon and also uh, check out my YouTube again. So youtube.com slash skullbabylon and uh, that's my info there. Check out my videos when you get a chance and again check out the plant a seed thing. Get involved with the plant a seed project and uh, we'll sort of take it from there. The whole idea with that is that you know when you take a rock and you throw it into a river you don't just observe the splash and just get impressed by that. Like for me I like watching the actual ripples of the water just spread out. Like, that's kind of, for me, like, the splash is sort of a momentary, orgasmic, like, boom, it happens, and then it's over sort of thing. But if you watch the ripples, and watch how subtle, and just how prominent and, and really beautiful they are in their own ways, like, just visually, too, uh, there's just a metaphor there in, in terms of when you're doing stuff out in the public, you got to you gotta be able to understand that it's not just about that one time, like, bang for your buck. You're, you're doing something that's going to leave an impression with people and get them thinking, and it's planting that seed and uh, potentially, you know, what happens after that is, is sort of beyond your own perception, but that's the whole idea, you know, the conversation is going to ripple outwards. So that said, let's get some, uh, let's get a caller on the air. So for those of you who are in the queue, I, I, if you press one on your keypad, I'll know that you're ready to come on. Right now there's three people in the queue. Um, so for anybody who's in there or anybody who's not dialed in yet, again, what we're looking for, we're looking for somebody who's involved with the Paradigm Shift community in their area. Right now, the three people in the queue, I don't think they've pressed one on their keypad, so I'm not just going to bring them on unless it, unless I get confirmation that they're ready to come on. So dun, dun, dun. in the meantime, guys, so <clears throat> a lot of the show is uh, just community promotion and everything. So we have our platform through the Paradigm Shift Central groups, uh, facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift. Shift Central and Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio. But other than that, a big part of the show getting out there and getting a regular sort of audience does depend on you guys. So if you guys just, again, as a, as a reminder, just feel free to uh, promote the show in the meantime, post it out there, tell people to get involved. Like I know like it's hard to sort of like explain the show to them in the sense that we don't have a specific guest, but just tell them it's about open conversation. So, I mean, I guarantee you we'll get into some interesting stuff right now in, later in the show. I just can't exactly tell you what it is yet because we aren't there. So, all right. Um, callers in the queue. None of them are queued up in terms of uh, somebody from another Paradigm Shift community. <coughs> So very, uh, I could very possibly bring Va Von Halford on the show again because I know he's uh, he's got my back and he's like in the queue regardless. But uh, Vaughn, you're on the show last week, so I'd like to get somebody else uh, in ahead of you now, guys. Just chat with me in the live chat. Somebody in the live chat, private message me if you're actually interested in calling in in terms of uh, just being able to add to the conversation on the show. Um. I mean, if that said, if nobody has, I mean, I know my buddy was actually going to be calling from Paradigm Shift Chatham, but he uh, he may be having like computer technical difficulties or something at this moment. I'm not entirely sure, but again, in the meantime, in terms of uh, getting the whole Paradigm Shift thing going, just if you're 
if you're thinking about starting up a community and you haven't done it yet, it's quite simple to do. All you really need is just an initiative and a small group of friends and uh, putting the word out there and trying to host uh, social gathering events in places like libraries or parks or anything like that, places where it's not even going to have to cost you money so it's going to be free and places where you can put up uh, community posters and get people invited and just promote things as open conversation circles or meditation circles because that's pretty much what we do here in London and it's been working like a charm. On average, our regular Friday meetings, we're getting about at least 20 people on average and, and the conversation is always quite very, very passionate and the meditation is very powerful so if you're interested in starting paradigm shift community go to the facebook.com slash paradigm shift central and scroll down a bit and uh, you'll see there's a tips and trick document in terms of getting one started in your area so <laughs> yeah ross you're you're listening to the show right now go ahead and call in uh that that's not a problem because nobody else in the uh in terms of listeners and people calling in right now i so if, if you can hit one on your keypad, Ross, I'll know which one's you, because I can see there's two other people, and I'm not sure which one's you, actually. So I can't press one yet in terms of uh, bringing the callers on. But again, guys, um, if you if you want to get involved with this whole paradigm shifting, it's quite easy to do, and there's definitely the support behind it, just in the sense that the more people who are involved everywhere, it's just going to add like momentum to it. And it's, it, and it's very... The paradigm shifting, it's, it can be a very subtle thing, and it's something that takes patience. So you don't feel don't feel as if you're trying to force something. Like, I know we all want to go out there and meet like-minded people, but it's not going to happen overnight. So basically, in that sense, you know, just be patient with it. You want to you want to put the word out there, have an open door, and uh, just sort of start feeling it out there. And then if you have things like um, little pamphlets or something that can direct people to your Facebook group or even direct them to the ParadigmShiftCentral.com website, uh, do that. Just sort of hand those out. I mean, you can stand at a street corner and hand those out, or you can go full-blown with the plan that we pulled off, which was holding up the signs with the, the, the ideas on them and then having the business cards at the same time and handing those out, which is what we did in the uh, Plant a Seed video. So, all right. Um, okay, I think we got Ross, who is probably ready to come on air. I'm going to. Okay, I'm going to roll the dice. Okay, here we go. All right, so Ross, I'm bringing you on air. I know this is you because you pressed one on your keypad. All right, so one second. Hello, is this Ross? Yo, yeah, this is Ross. What's going on? <laughs> hey, dude. All right, so uh, this is this is Ross from Paradigm Shift Chatham, and Paradigm Shift Chatham is uh, just a, another small sort of city town that's not far from London, Ontario. And Ross has actually been on the show not too long ago, and uh, he had made it out to some of our regular Friday meetings. So that said, Ross, how's it going, man? Well, how, how's things uh, on your end? Oh, pretty awesome, man. You know, uh, had a great night last night. Having a great day today. I can't complain. Loving it. <laughs> for sure, man. It's uh, it, it's interesting because like, for me, when I'm sort of having a when I'm having a good day, like I notice things are sort of in sync. Like um, a really peculiar thing that happened yesterday with the whole plant a seed thing. Uh, so I mean, all all sort of day I was doing this this whole like project, and, and I kept like talking about planting seed. And then after that, a few of us went to um, Victoria Park, and uh, they were actually playing the the Lorax, which is like a three D animated. I don't, I don't know if it's I guess it's Pixar, um, and uh, or uh, maybe it's not. But anyways, so like Lorax is based off of Dr. Seuss. Long story short, the entire theme of that movie, or at least the part that we caught, was all about plant a seed. Because there was like this one seed that that was left to, out of all the trees that got chopped down. So out of one seed, like an entire forest could grow. So it was just like really cool in the sense of when you're having a good day, stuff like that happens where where you're talking about something and then the universe like says something directly back to you and it sort of like reaffirms something for you, you know? Like call it synchronicity or whatever. But do you yeah, know man, that? That literally just happened to me half an hour, half okay. an hour ago talking to one of my buddies on here. Yeah, we said the exact same thing. Then we said right. And then we put the LOL, and then we kind of went, whoa. And I said, great minds think alike. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? We're syncing up. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, that said, man, um, how's things looking for the Paradigm Shift Chatham chapter? Like, where whereabouts are you guys in terms of, uh, I mean, I know you got your Facebook page up, and I know you got a meeting coming up, so tell, tell me more. Um, well, we got it at a Perfect Harmony Body and Mind in Chatham, 72 Victoria Ave. I think it's Victoria Ave. One sec here. 
Yeah, uh, 72 Victoria Ave, Chatham, Ontario. We know it's going to be in October sometime. Um, the woman that runs the yoga studio is going to let us know. She's very interested. So I didn't talk to her personally. I still have yet to meet her. Uh, Spidey Steph talked to her. Um, she goes there for meditation and whatnot. So, you know, she wants, it was actually her idea to get this whole thing started up. So uh, she kind of came to me for help, and we got my buddy Mitch. So there's the three of us. We're all doing this together. And, uh, you know, we started the page, and there's lots of people interested. I'm getting lots of messages. And, you know, I don't even know what to tell them. I'm mostly directing them to your page right now. But they're all, like, like-minded people, people that I didn't even know had any interest in stuff like this. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It brings people out of the woodwork, you know? Like, uh, uh, oftentimes, they are interested in and, um, they, You know, they sort of get to a certain point, but then they're, they're not sure that they're doing stuff, too, you know? Because they literally haven't met them. They, they, so for a lot of people, like, they might know if they're, like, really exciting. Person in, in flesh, like about the type of, like video game or something. Yeah. yeah. So, um, like, uh, I mean, with just with that community news, what would you sort of like tonight? Like, is there anything that you're particularly interested? In? Hey, one, hey, Skull, one second, man. I'm losing you. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, sorry, okay, there we go. Sorry, what were you asking? I was just saying, like, uh, in terms of, uh, just, like, talk, like, I want to be able to, uh, hold on, guys. Is my, yeah, who's wrong with the uh, mic at least somewhat? Ross, can you hear me at least? Uh, you're kind of cutting in and out, man. I'm kind of getting, like, parts of what you're saying. <laughs> sorry, man. Well, no, I mean, it's like, not... Like, what are some topics of discussions that I want to have? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, basically, yeah. Whether it be just for, like, the show or actually, like, stuff in your community, so to speak. Oh, well, uh... Wow, I don't know, man. Basically, just, like, uh, like the whole consciousness thing, the whole we are one thing, that's a big thing for me. Um, that's obviously the most important thing for me, so we're going to start there and see where it goes. Um, I'm sure you know I really like the... Uh, like the lucid dream and the astral projection topic, and that's actually what a lot of people were messaging me about. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just spiritual spiritualism in general. Uh, like a lot of people are interested in meditation that I had no idea were interested in it. Um, I honestly thought that I was the only one in the area until you know, like you say, people started coming out of the woodwork. So uh, yeah, just basic stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, man. Like um. With uh, I'm just trying to sort of lose my train of thought. I'm sort of reading stuff on the iPad. Now. But um, I don't know, man. Like um, okay. What's your thoughts on a uh, crop circle? Cro- crop circles? Just sort of pull that out of a hat. Um, <laughs> on crop circles. Uh, well, if you would have asked me that question six months ago, I would have had a totally different answer than what I have now, only because. I've actually been researching into them a little bit. Um, Like with the whole sacred geometry thing, it's something trying to tell us something. I mean, you know, before I thought it was just people going around with boards and, uh, you know what I mean, like knocking crops down. And then I watched a few documentaries on it and whatnot, and I'm starting to realize that, yeah, there is more to this. I mean, what was the one I saw? Where uh, we sent a message up, and they sent us almost an identical message back. And, you know, we can't. Human beings, we cannot make these crop circles, the way that they're being formed, the way that they're being made, how intricate they are, how perfect they are. Um, Honestly, I am fascinated by it. It's not something I think about too often, but since you bring it up, yes, I am fascinated by it. It's amazing. Yeah, like, uh, it's it's something that I've definitely obviously been interested in in a while because we see such, like, intricate, specific designs, like, within them. So there's this whole idea of, like, you know, okay, Take, take, putting aside, like, the whole idea that it's people with planks and woods, like, what's actually happening here, you know? It's almost as if there's, like, a, a like a conscious thought that exists beyond the physical that's, like, imprinting itself, like, almost from a top-down perspective onto, like, the biological, in this, in this case, like, you know, 
corn or grass or something, you know? It's it's literally so connected with, like, the field around itself that it just sort of, like, pushes things and, and like, bends things over. Like, I mean, there's something... Yeah, man, it, it's it's trippy stuff. Like, it, it really is. That's, like, a lot. Like, the crops, like, actually bend in the first place. Like, even just in that sense, like, what's happening that's causing the crops to bend, let alone form, like, intricate design, you know? Like, right, yeah, you saying that's trippy stuff, that's, like, the best way to describe it. It is trippy stuff. You're like, I can't explain it. I don't know anybody that really can, so... Yeah, yeah. And uh, I guess the, the thing is, like, I mean, there's got to be, like, other... There's got to be some websites that keep pretty consistent with terms of, uh, like, a log for crops coming in all over the world. But it's a fairly regular thing, I mean... Or, or at least, you know, there's sort of, like, downtimes and uptimes. But, I mean, they've never just, like, completely ceased by any means, which which is sort of interesting in the sense that, you know, like, which ones have we, like, yet to see? You know, are, are they getting, like, increasingly more relevant or something? Or, you know, because each one you think would hold some sort of message to it, which is kind of another idea that I've thought of. Like, this idea that in the same way that we've talked about, like, sigils and stuff in the past and, like, art and magic and stuff... There's an idea that, like, the crop circles have sort of, like, an encoded message, like, within them. So simply by someone observing the symbol of the crop circle, whether or not they're actually able to, like, comprehend it or decipher it, there's, like, a part of their consciousness that simply through the mere act of observing it, it's, like, sort of downloading or connecting them with an aspect of information that is, like, a part of that crop circle's design in, in some way. So it's almost as if, like, you know, on a higher level, say your spirit, say you're sort of like looking down, or some sort of you're something else. Like just the idea of uh, of being able to like consciously encode some sort of energy or message into these symbols that that are represented through the crop circles because they're such peculiar designs, man. Like if you go, if you actually go and just look at all the crop circles, it's just you know, it's just so. I mean, other than the ones that are like very geometrical, there's some that just look so alien, you know. Like, mm-hmm, yeah. Like, they're not just random. It's like it's like a language that we can't read, you know? Yeah, they are, like, very intricate. And I, I totally understand what you're saying, where, like, you know, maybe something is being planted in us when we look at them. Uh, what was that thing I saw today where there's... Like, we only use so much of our brain, right? So we only see so much of our reality. Maybe looking at the crop circles is giving us some, some sort of sense subconsciously that we're not aware of. I totally understand what you're saying when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe if we go out there and we stare at pitches of crop circles long enough, it'll uh, help uh, unlock our psychic ability. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Oh, it all makes sense now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like, you just kind of like meditate on different visuals to unlock or something. But I know um, with the crop circles, like me and my buddy. I mean, I talked to him about this idea a while back, and then um, he's the same buddy who uh, who I had help with in terms of making the butt. Smaller buttons, and then he, he did this himself, and he made like a whole bunch of uh, little buttons with like crop circle designs on them. So, and, and so it was just kind of cool to like have those sort of distributed in different places. And uh, the place that he was like that he had one of his tables set up, he was making it so that like people could interact and make their own buttons and color them in. And there was like a, there's uh, this group of kids that were like just doing it. They were just like it was just interesting watching them interact with the crop. You know, they're just like, oh, I like this one, this one, this one, but, like, not that one or something. It's just, I don't know, it's really peculiar, because, like, kids are sort of, you know, they're sort of on that level. I mean, they're not, they're just sort of, like, in that zone, so they're naturally, like, sort of, like, drawn to to the energy of the crop. Yeah, no, I hear you. Well, when I was a kid, it was fascinating, but when I started getting a little bit older, you know, I was starting to become more skeptic on what was going on around me and what I believed, and that's when I started saying, you know, oh, they're, they're just bullshit, and... Now I'm out of that state of mind. I'm way more open-minded now, especially when it comes to this, the stuff like that. I actually like to look at the evidence of things now. Um, that's why I, you know, I like the whole spirituality thing over the whole religious thing because when it comes to what <clears throat> I'm believing in, my philosophy, there's a lot more science behind it than, you know, what people think there is, what people want to look into. So. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, oh, was that? Oh, I, I did have an idea. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm. Sorry. I'm kind of in between two spots right now, sort of between two different stuff and having a real conversation with you. But what I was going to say, um, guys, just in terms of those who are tuned into the show right now, sort of the pattern that I'd actually like to, to get out of this is that rather than having to, um, like, say goodbye to a caller and then look for another caller to call in, at this point, now that we've sort of gone through the community um, 
used to begin with. But the floor is the, like this show is basically a platform. It's an open platform at this point. So if you have any topic of interest that you would like to bring on to the show, this is the rhythm that we're trying to get into. So I mean, obviously there aren't going to be special guests on the show every time, but when there aren't what we're going to be trying to do as a community, and you're allowed to call in more than once as a community, try and get into this like hopscotch rhythm where, for example, Ross is called in right now, but then we have our next caller already in the queue, and then we'll be able to hopscotch like over to them without having the downtime. So if anybody would like to uh, come on to the show and bring any sort of conversation topic onto the show, please feel free to call in using Skype through the Blog Talk Radio or uh, call in manually again on your phone, and the number for that is 347-53. Nine five four nine three. So, whatever topics you would like to see on the show, something that you feel people should know about in, in terms of you know putting together the pieces of the puzzle, so to speak. So, that said, like Ross, what was sort of uh, what, I mean, we, we've kind of already talked about this, but like, what was sort of like a big paradigm shifting moment for you? You know, like sort of tying in with this idea that like. We we don't think that like psychic abilities are real, but in some way there's like there actually is like some sort of truth to that. Like, was there any particular like aha moment where where stuff sort of painted itself into a new picture for you? Like uh, when it came to like, you're talking about psychic abilities or just spirituality in general? Yeah, just sort of like spirituality and and sort of going further down the rabbit hole in general. Okay, well uh, for me it was kind of like I was always like under the assumption that there was like a god, but in my mind, he couldn't do anything for me, he couldn't help me, whatever, you know, I, I pictured God as like a uh, a giant superhuman being type thing, if, if you know what I'm saying, but, um, you know, I started kind of going down that path, I started praying and whatnot, and I realized, you know, this isn't really for me, and uh, I met some people, and I started watching some videos, and I started reading stuff, and I started to realize that, you know, consciousness is more... Like, we take it for granted. A lot of people don't understand it, and they don't even bother trying to understand it. And that's when I really started thinking to myself, really started observing. And that's when I realized there's way more to consciousness than we understand than what we know. And I, that really sparked my interest in it. You know, that's when I really started studying, really started trying to understand. Um, I realized that we can't fully understand. Um, I think that's literally impossible for us to fully understand, but... As long as we do have an understanding of this, of our consciousness, you know, that we are conscious beings and that we are one collective consciousness throughout the universe, you know, that's what brought me into it. So that's why I started coming to the Paradigm Shift meetings because, you know, I wanted to meet, I wanted to talk to other people who shared the same views that I did. Yeah, this, yeah. Like, this was in a short span of time, too. I mean, it kind of just clicked for me one day. It was it was weird. I literally woke up and I literally oh. got it that day. <laughs> well, there you go. And, and, I, and I think, you know, I think that's happening um, for for a lot more people other than just yourself. People who are just sort of they're just it's it's like things are clicking or or, or they're hearing a message conveyed in a certain way that that they're just like yes, yeah, like that's what I've been trying to express, but but haven't found the words to do so, and that now suddenly they have like a vocabulary behind these like sort of abstract thoughts that they once sort of had in their mind. But I know for me, like, the whole, like, God thing, you know, obviously people are sort of, uh, they tiptoe around that concept to some degree. But for me, like, I mean, obviously there's this idea of, like, an anthropomorphic God. But again, like, with what you're saying, like, the God that I sort of perceive as God is more like an oversoul. And God itself is, like, the field, like, the matrix field itself. So it's, like, it's, right. like awareness like of the field from a high enough level and it sort of goes up through hierarchies so as much as we are God we're just sort of like a fraction of that grand perception of the oversoul and then like from there it sort of goes down it like crystallizes like through fractions so you know a lot of people they uh like they'll say that oh well you know look out look out at the galaxy around you and it's like all these millions and billions of stars we're just like a small single speck on, on this one planet. Like, obviously, you know, we're so insignificant. But I'm like, no, no, no. Like, that's just the macro. It's just what's above you. You know, there's like also micro within you and stuff. So, I mean, when you think about it that way, like, each one of us is like the center of our own universe, like, in a literal sense. And that was something right. for me. Like, that's way more empowering in, in, in that idea. And, and it is sort of like, yes, you are God. Get over it and do something <laughs> to live. You know? So. 
Right. Yeah, we are infinitely small and we are infinitely large, depending on whatever way you want to look at it. Yeah. But it's like, uh, with the whole God thing, yeah, I've, I've always been interested in talking about God, even back when I was a skeptic. But when, you know, like, like I, me and you were both saying, when I would discuss God with people, I would have this mental picture in my head of what God is supposed to be, you know? Right, yeah. When I came to the understanding that you literally cannot imagine what God would look like, because God does not have a physical form, you know? Like you were saying, like, the way you can picture him from whatever, like, he is all consciousness, you know? He is, he is all, like, we are all one, and we are all part of God, and God is part of us, and we are a, just only a fraction of what God actually is, so... Yeah, I like that you pointed that out. I've kind of been saying that for the past month or so. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like even in that sense, like who we think we are is only a fraction of like who we really are. In that sense of like, who, like, and you know, you, you can sort of you can sort of branch this topic in, in terms of like psychedelic experiences and stuff. I mean, a lot of that is like opening you up to like other sides of yourself that or other perceptions within yourself that you uh, otherwise normally wouldn't really uh, perceive from so to speak but um yeah like there's like I, I think that's sort of for me that's part of why I want to be able to like help people do all this is that there's like like we've all sort of been playing this video game and, and we forgot that we were playing you know, like, there's, like, another part of us that you can almost, like, imagine is, like, sitting at a computer somewhere, like, logged into this giant MMO, like, multi mass multiplayer online game. Like, it's this life is literally sort of like that. And then at some point, there's going to be a part of us that's going to, like, step up away and, like, get up from that computer and just, like, walk around and, like, breathe for a second and, and just be like, oh, like, that was a fun game. But, like, right now, like, so many of us, they we don't even think about ourselves existing on that level. So we're just, like, playing the character in the game. But if you can sort of expand your, like, consciousness, so to speak, you can sort of start seeing things like, from a bigger top-down perspective, then it sort of, I guess, puts things... You, you start to see where things fall into place uh, a little bit more sensibly. Like, you, you start to understand that things do happen for a reason. And, and sometimes it's hard to see when you're so close to the picture, but when you step back, things start to, you know, you, you understand why things happen, because, like, one thing leads to another, and now you're where you need to be to get to where you plan to go. So, I don't know if you have right. anything to add to that, but... I love no. I love the way you worded that. Where uh, you know we're sitting at a computer playing a game, and a part of us gets up and takes a breath for a minute. That's a good way of looking at it. I've never thought of it that way before, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> Something like that. But yeah, it just like goes up and goes to the bathroom for the first time. So. Yeah, and it's like whoa. Yeah, you know, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, I don't know if you've ever heard the where they say you know if you're in a cave and you're staring at the back of the cave your whole life and all you can see is shadows and there's so much going on behind you and someone comes in and says hey, you know, there's trees and there's grass and there's nature out there and they're creating those shadows. If all you've ever seen is those shadows your whole life, it's going to be hard for you to understand that, hey, you know, there are trees and there is nature out there that's creating these because that's all you know. Yeah. And, you know, you got to turn around and look to wake up to that, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely, like, the whole allegory of the cave was uh, what's expressed there. I mean, I mean, I, I, you know, I could... <laughs> Like maybe maybe we'll, we'll wrap up the conversation in, in a second because I think um uh, I got another guy who's going to be coming on the air in a bit. But just in, in terms of like that whole allegory, like I mean, you know, that just brings me back to the whole like Matrix movies, and and, and I love movies and, and stuff. And actually, uh, I just went and I saw um, Dread 3D tonight for by myself, which was pretty sweet. 3D, and that was that was a cool movie in itself. So, I mean, this could suddenly turn into like just like a podcast about talking about movies. But uh, oh, I'm so down. <laughs> which is important because there's a lot of symbolism in the movies and, and maybe we can go there maybe not right this second but what uh, what I was directly talking about in terms of the Matrix was just I remember I specifically remember like seeing that movie when it was playing out at the drive-in and it, it was like on the screen and I was like half watching it but my mind just like couldn't process like what was happening it was just like so awesome but, like, it wasn't until, like, I saw the movie at least, like, a couple times later. I mean, I was pretty young. And then it started, like, piecing itself together. And, and then as I got older, I was just, like, still deciphering this film. And I was just like, oh, my God, like, this isn't just a film. Like, this is, this is like, pretty, 
you know, pretty relative in, in terms of, like, you know, you, you have people who are sort of, like, conscious of that level up, kind of like what we were talking about, and then you have people who are convinced that they're, they are the system, that they are in the system, and that's, like, the absolute finite end of it, and, and they're just sort of, like, you know, they're stuck in that humaton mode, but, man, I just, fil films are amazing, and, and, yeah, like, Matrix is obviously one that, that stands out, and I don't think you're... I mean, well, actually, I was about to say, there's probably not going to be another film like The Matrix coming out anytime soon, but there actually is a film uh, by the, the two people who made The Matrix, which is called uh, Cloud Atlas, which is actually coming out, I think, like within a month or something in October. But, uh, yeah, maybe maybe that that would be something that we'll, we'll both have to go see and come back and talk about in a future show, um, or at least check the trailer for that. Have you heard of that one, Cloud, Cloud Atlas? Uh, Cloud Atlas. Have you heard of that yet? No. Hang on. I'm just going to type yeah. it down. <laughs> but no, oh. I haven't heard of it. No. Yeah. Check check it out when when you get a chance. Um, it's all about like sort of everything happens for a reason and it takes place in like multiple storylines through time. Uh, so so it looks like pretty pretty intense and, and definitely definitely something that we'll we'll be able to see. And I and I use the term we loosely, but we'll sort of be able to see it on a different level. You know, some people will go into that in the same way the Matrix is like. This. Some people will go into it and they'll just like be entertained have an awesome time and like like you know like see a little bit of ultra violence but then there's the other people who are sort of like reading you know beneath the surface of, of what the filmmaker is actually trying to express here so that's always something that inter interests me is like do some of these filmmakers like how conscious are they um i think the wachowskis uh probably are fairly conscious obviously the writers involved with the matrix had some part in that but i mean still like this bigger picture is that it's like the universe is trying to communicate to itself to, like, get it to wake up. And this sort of goes back to, like, the crop circle thing. And I think that's what a big part of the crop circle things are. They're, like, a part of human consciousness, at the very least, like, a part of consciousness as a whole, trying to communicate with itself to get it to wake up as we sort of, like, move through this whole process that we're going through. Because that's, that's evidently, like, what's happening. Like, I mean, some people are going to fall more asleep, but some people are going to wake up. And, and it's, like, happening... You know, that's it's not it's not just going to be stopped. Like it, it's like an internal thing that's like blossoming outwards. You know, so and for some mm -hmm. people, it's going to be sort of a uh, you know sort of like for you, like you wake up one morning, you're just like, wait a second, things are you know like shift to the paradigm here. Like things are a bit different. So I yeah, I, I was looking at the world totally differently. I was talking to people totally differently. You know, I was yeah, I, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> cool, you know. Or, or sorry, did you have to play more on that? Or? Well, I was just going to say, you know, uh, it's like the perfect balance of, like, I had those depressed thoughts in my head still, of course. You know, they, they're they not just going to go away overnight like that. But I learned to be able to live with them, to accept them. And it wasn't bringing me happiness. It wasn't bringing me sadness. It was just kind of letting me be, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, sometimes, you know, it's just being able to, like, accept it and not try to force things. I think that's, like, a big lesson, something I've sort of been reflecting on, is that, you know, if things are going to happen, they'll happen. You shouldn't have to, like, force them. It's good to have right. them, but you don't need to force things. Things will sort of play out. Forcing things can sort of, you know, you'll, like, push things too far, and then things snap back, and you'll just, like, sort of end up where you started, and there's like, damn, well, that didn't work. And so the lesson the next time around is to, like, not force it and, and understand that it will fall into place, like, naturally. Exactly, yeah, just let it be, let, you know, yeah, the outcome's going to turn out however it's going to turn out, and you have to accept it, so. Yeah, yeah, and that's like a whole, you know, you can think about that very multi-dimensionally, too, is that, you know, where are the other realities that don't work out quite like that, or, or the idea that they still do exist, it's sort of like an infinite computer processing sort of thing, and we just sort of have to be tuned into the one that out of all the possibilities, like, this is the almost ideal circumstance of, like, where the universe wants to situate itself, you know, like, all these multiple parallel realities could exist at the same time, but, like, we, as a conscious observer, as, like, that, like, center of our own universe, are, like, perceiving it through this one, like, almost through a choice, in, in very, very, I don't know, <laughs> very sort of, uh, metaphysical way, I guess. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, I hear you. But it's, like, if I didn't make the decisions that I wouldn't have made in life, I wouldn't be here. But I can't dwell on that because I was going to end up here regardless because I did make those decisions and that's what happened. And this is where I he this is where I am now, you know. So. Yeah. Yep. Even using not to decide is still a choice sometimes. So that's a quote from wow. Rock, actually. 
<laughs> choosing not to de- choosing not to decide is a choice sometimes. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I, I like that. <laughs> All right, man. Um, any sort of last message out there for the people who are listening now or are going to be listening in the future in terms of uh, inspiration or something for them to take with them? Uh, no, just peace, love, and shift your paradigm. Be the shift. There you go, man. All right. So, Ross from Paradigm Shift Chatham. Check out the Facebook page for that. Even if you aren't in Chatham, just check it out because, I mean, it's always cool to see how the communities are sort of doing their own thing. Like, there's no specific one way to do it which is the whole point. So Paradigm Shift Chatham's got their sort of own angle on it. And the, it's uh, facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Chatham. So D-H-A-T-A. Is there another? Chatham. Yeah, yeah. So C-H-A-T-H-A-M. Chatham. <laughs> there you go. So chat the ham up. Paradigm Shift Chatham. All right. Thanks, Ross. Yeah, cool. thanks, Cole. Come oh, man. All right. Yeah. Namaste. Cool. All right, so I'm um, going to pretty much jump on right on to the next caller. And uh, Lucid Charm, I know you were calling in, and it appears that you got things working. So if you're ready to come on, just press 1 in the keypad right now, in your Skype keypad as well. Um, if you go into Skype, there's like a little thing up near the search. Uh, click that, and it brings open a keypad, then press 1. And I'll know for sure if you're ready to call on, join the air. So that said, guys, um, if if, uh, if you if you have like specific guests that you'd like to see on the show, always uh, feel free to let us know. Paradigm Shift is always looking for suggestions. You know, we we uh, I'm not really just trying to like sit here and talk to myself the entire time and trying to impress anyone. Like, what I want to be able to do is to create a platform so that we can use it as a community, so we can practice having these conversations and talking and, and all that. So um. Okay. All right. Lucid Charm, you are ready to come on to the air. So I'm going to bring you on now, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. So, All right. Lucid, it. You. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Uh, it sounds okay. All right. So Lucid Charm, where are you calling from, and do you want to go by another name? Um, You can call me Fedge, and I am calling from Paoli, Indiana. Cool. Uh, did, you, US. did you say Fudge? Fedge. F-F-E-J. Uh, okay. Right. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, I know. <laughs> cool, man. I'm like, I, I, do I know anyone called Fudge? So, <laughs> yeah. What, what would you, what would you like to bring to the show tonight, Fudge? Um. Well, I've been thinking a lot about um, the use of language, and especially uh, the use of language when relating to things along the idea of science and spirituality. Like, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of these spiritual concepts, I've noticed, have a lot of physical, you know, uh, connections to them. Like how emotions are, you know, we experience them, and they can be a very useful spiritual tool to see where we're going in our lives. But, you know, I, I think I watched a movie, you know, What the Bleep Do We Know? Right. Um, where they were talking about uh, how our, what is it, uh, thymus? The, produces these hormones and these chemicals that our body re- reacts to. Something along those lines. And I've been thinking a lot about it. Mm-hmm. And I've been watching a lot of people say a lot of the same things uh, in relation to, you know, oh, you know, it's this way and from a scientist and then the spiritual person jumps in and goes, oh, no, it's this way. And I'm just listening in going, oh, wow, you guys are saying exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah you know, tr- have you noticed that? Language, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that's, yeah, there's like um, this weird debate that goes back and forth and, and the, the big buffer that's causing it is like semantics and, and, and language because, you know, essentially this can be, you know, e- even when you think about like people like trying to explain God in different ways and, and then you get like this whole like religion thing. I mean, yeah. you know, it's all, I mean, with, with religion and not to get into a huge talk about religion, but I mean, the simple right. way I see it is it's sort of a, I visualize it as like a, a wheel with spokes. So all the, all the way around the wheel are the different religions. And then like all the spokes going in towards the middle, like that's like, that's, 
you know, like that center in the middle is like truth or, or whatever, some sort of absolute truth in, in some way, or not even absolute, but some sort of truth. And then you got all these religions just sort of looking in on that same perspective from uh, different angles, and then right, using right. language as a result. So. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen a lot of similarities in between what you know the Christians are talking about or have been talking about, what Buddhists talk about, Hindus. I haven't really studied a whole lot of you know the Muslim faith or Islam, but I'm pretty sure that they're saying a lot of the same things as well. And yeah. you know, it all kind of boils down, you know, to love. You know, what we were talking about last week, you know, love is really the answer. Um, I think I was talking to uh, Ross Saint Pierre. Um, about it earlier that, you know, no matter what problem you're faced with, no matter what question is asked, I mean, the real true answer really boils down to love. Mm -hmm. You know, love love yourself, love everything about you because you are everything and everything is you. Yeah. Yeah. Like love definitely, um, you know, it it brings things back to that unity. I, I, I sort of visualize. I, I like drew this out once in, in terms of like how to how to explain love. If I were to try and take the concept of love and try to explain it to someone from like you know another planet or, or something, like what I would do, I, uh, I I drew like a box, but only the corners of it. So it was just like four corners, and then on the inside of that, it was sort of like a crosshair, um, like a video game crosshair, and, and that. Yeah as a structure, so four corners and a cross here in the middle, that represented love. That represented things being where they're meant to be sort of thing. And then anything that was like a variation of love or hate or, or whatever was just like that shape, but um, like skewed and, and, and disproportioned. So, you know, you take, suddenly it's not a box anymore. Like things are pointed the wrong way. Things aren't fitting together. It's still the same thing, but it's not like structured in its uniform fashion. So, oh, I mean, wow, that's 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 even um so I mean even when you think of that what I just said and think about that whole like messages and water thing that's sort right, of presented right. in what the believe that we know as well right so when you have that love the sacred geometry like the proportions are like where they're sort of naturally meant to be which is like you know certain distances from each other and facing in certain directions and then as you throw in like the vibration of fear it's just like distorting that but but for reality to unfold we need that fear, so to speak, to get like this variation of things within our reality. You know, if things were perfect, there would be no progress. <laughs> it was just kind of yeah. yeah. Without strife, there would be nothing for us to grow with mm-hmm. or against or for however yeah. you want to put it. Yeah, totally. Like there you must know, be mud for the seed to plant its roots in order for the lotus to grow. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, going. I mean, we sort of touched on this last week when we had um, Jordan and Elijah on the show. Like this whole right. idea, of, you know, uh, you know, light, love, and darkness. In this idea that you have to sort of understand that the darkness is not like this bad thing. It's just like part of. It's part of the unity, and it's like equally as important as the light is. So too is the dark. But at the same time, like yes, what we're trying to move towards is a, a more, like, centered point of unity where, where things are sort of cohesive. Like, obviously, like, sort of on a global scale, you look at things, and, and that box is not a box right now. Like, things are pointed in the wrong direction just in terms of, you know, ends not meeting and stuff like that. So, yes. Like, I mean, it depends on your definition of wrong, too. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it yeah. could be going in just the right direction. It just seems wrong from your perspective. Yeah. You know? That's exactly, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, not wrong in the sense that it shouldn't be happening. <laughs> In the sense that it's it's sort of moving in another direction, just so it can uh, have the option to sort of bounce back to where it needs to be, and then it, and then it creates something new out of that. So it's not even necessarily trying to you know this whole symmetry out of chaos thing. It's not trying to create exactly what it was, but rather it's trying to create new symmetry out of like this whole new scenario that's been created because of like the distortion that was caused by fear and and whatever from the original right. love. I like, I yeah. like to say that, you know, chaos brings order, which brings chaos, which brings order, which brings chaos, which brings order, yeah. and on and on and on and on. And one cannot I, really understand the light if one doesn't or isn't able to enjoy the darkness, you know? And one can't enjoy the darkness without understanding the light. You know, really, yeah. it's, it's about balance. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, you, you need to go through those lows to be able to appreciate the highs. And, right. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, man. Um, what else? Uh, what what else would, would you like to sort of bring to the show? Like, what's the sort of particular topic of interest that that you uh you like mm-hmm. to speak? Uh, I, I'm really interested in crystals. Really, um, I've been kind of gravitating towards them for the past few months. Okay, I, you... I really enjoy crystals. <laughs> <laughs> they're shiny, so they are shiny. They are shiny, and they're powerful. Do you have a favorite crystal, by any chance? Um, I mean, I'm not. I mean, I do have <laughs> crystals. I mean, it's kind of weird because I mean, it's. I feel like we're like you know like talking about like Pokemon here and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all a matter of preference, really. Yeah, I mean, my, my I guess I would just say quartz. I mean, I I do like quartz, but I mean, there's some there's some fancy ones and stuff too. But um, yeah, like what's what's your understanding on crystals? Like like what do you sort of see them as in terms of like a tool, so to speak? Um, it, oh man, this is gonna open up a whole box. Um, <laughs> whole box. I, I, a whole a whole box of candy, really. Um. I mean, I don't know how much stock you put into channelers, um, but I really like to listen to uh, Bashar. And uh, he kind of likens these things to, like, uh, permission slips. You know, we give ourselves permission to open this doorway to perception or this form of understanding by using this tool. But crystals, he says, are really actually, they do work. Um, And from what I've come to understand, um, especially on, like, a, like thinking about quantum physics and quantum mechanics, which I don't truly understand, especially the mathematics behind it, but I understand the concepts fairly well, is that they have a very stable vibration. And you can use this vibration kind of to help you, you know, your atoms vibrate in resonance with the crystal yeah. vector. Like let's say, you know, quartz, it has a very clear, bright vibration to it. So, I mean, in holding quartz, on focusing on it, and meditating with it, and on how it was formed, you know, you're able to get your atoms, the atoms that make up, you know, what you perceive as you, to vibrate at a similar frequency, which helps to unlock doors into other forms of perception, and other ideas may come flooding to you, or, uh, like, in the case of, uh, what is it, Labradorite, I think? I think a lot of people really love Labradorite. It's um, a stone of uh, synchronicity. Mm. And it really helps to get, you know, synchronistic events to really flow, especially in your favor. Because, you know, as we all know, sometimes they don't flow in our favor exactly the way we want them. (laughs) Yes, yeah. Mm. But, I mean, you know, yeah, crystals. (laughs) Yeah, crystals, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I've I've definitely, um, I mean, you, you how can how can you not be interested by them? I mean, you can either just sort of like look at them and be like, it's a shiny rock, that's it, no big deal. It, it's just you know, it, it's a paperweight. Yeah, yeah. Or or you can sort of you know look into it and just be like, all right, everything on this earth, everything on this planet serves some sort of purpose. You know, it's part of an ecosystem. It, it plays some sort of role. What role does the crystal play? And, and in a lot of ways, like, you know, you sort of say, like, these crystals have a very specific, like, resonating frequency to them. So, you know, is there a purpose to that? And uh, I think there definitely is. And it's something that's very subtle and uh, not necessar- necessarily um, super scientifically provable, so to speak. Although it, it could be. I mean, you could run your own test. So, I mean, obviously a lot of people are just uh, not going to be interested. But, I mean, I think the best way people can start working with crystals is to work with crystals, you know, just right, to try yeah. them out for themselves. And, and even, um, cause some people, you know, different people have different sensitivities, but one way would be to like take a crystal and put it under your pillow. Say if you're like an avid dreamer and notice, like, was there any difference? Like, did you have some sort of very peculiar dream where you like felt that you were more focused or something? Like oh, maybe yeah. that's something to do with the crystals <laughs> amplifying energy because, you know, in a lot of ways, like, one of the ways that I was introduced to crystals, and this is a simple way that people can look at it if they want to think of it as a tool, like crystals have the potential to amplify energies as well as absorb energies. So if you have a crystal that's on you and say you're going into like a negative environment, so to speak, rather than all that negative energy, like that literal vibration coming directly onto you and like going right into your heart chakra, so to speak, instead it would be sort of like diverted to the crystal. And then the Chris, and then not directly onto you, so you'd still be sort of like up and running, sort of thing. And then, um, kind of like know, theoretically, 
Yeah, kind of like a buffer. And then like theoretically, you between like, you and like I guess what one would call the rest of the world. Yes, yes, and, and so I mean it's something there to sort of like help protect you, so to speak, um, just because I mean the energies are there. We're energies, we're susceptible to energies, but we have these crystals to use for certain reasons, and uh, you know then it's this idea that like crystals hold energies, and you can even um, cleanse them at, at, at certain points should you but, choose to. You know they talk I, about like I, I think moonlight or water. That, um, selenite, like selenite for five minutes. Just put them on a piece of selenite for like five ten yeah. minutes. Sufficient enough to cleanse them and charge them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I, uh, an interesting story that I do have with crystals actually. Um, now, this is something I, I mean, you can try it if you want. I can't stop you from doing it. But <laughs> my, um, what, what we did, we like had, uh, we had crystals, or I had like one that I had had for a while, and I like gave it to him. We're just like, all right, I'm giving this to you as an experiment. Like, we're going to, like, he, he, we were in the process of, like, being pretty active into our dreams and stuff. And I'm like, all right, I'm, like, giving you this crystal for you to, like, keep with you when you dream. Like, tell me if anything happens. And then, so I, like, gave it to that guy. And he had it for a while. And, and he was a pretty avid dreamer and stuff like that. Um, right. He said he had, like, a few dreams where I was, like, in them and stuff. And, you know, interesting stuff. But uh, what happened next was he gave that crystal back to me, and then I gave it to another person. And then my other buddy, who I gave the crystal to the second time, he, uh, like, within the week, he, like, into me, he's like, man, like, I had, like, the craziest dream. Like, I was, like, uh, I was, like, strapped down, and, and, and they were, like, putting, like, nails through me or, so, or something like that. It was, like, really vivid and violent, sort of. And then... um. And then, like, he told me that dream, and then I was like, well, wait, it was like, hold on, like, man, like, the dream you told me is, like, the dream that my other buddy, like, told me about, too. Like, that was, like, a constant recurring dream for him. Like, he sort of has, like, nightmares and stuff. So it was this idea that because dream, like, because crystals can, like, take on energy, they can also, like, take on memory or, or, or like, you know, mm -hmm. some sort of printed data or something. And so basically, like, his dream for my one friend was, like, transferred over to my other friend and he experienced like his dream scenario so i mean whether that's i mean, it, can't say exactly if that is what happened you know because we're sort of outside the realms of uh right. science generalization yeah. there but i mean that's you know it, it, that just that's what we observed so that's just mm -hmm. a interesting story in terms of crystals that i have yeah that is really interesting i mean granted everything that we're experiencing you know with all of what we're working with is basically an experiment like the idea oh. that, you know, new age oh. is more of like revisiting the old age, but, you know, we're coming full circle. So we're able to stand where we once, you know, go back to where we started and know it for the first time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a huge process of remembering. So. Right. Remembering. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Becoming we're one again re with ourselves. Yes, exactly. Remembering, right? Like to right. be member again we're, we're like remembering right, we're right. Re coming together so yeah and then sooner or later <laughs> all of us are going to be doing magic and we're going to have our own crystals and uh yeah <laughs> we so, are our own crystals man we are yeah hey, yeah we are. yeah blood we're clocks, like blood, crystals, uh, so. blood clocks crystallize man yeah Look yeah exactly up. there's an electron microscope picture of it online somewhere all right okay man cool <laughs> so, <laughs> um I think, uh, okay, so we're at the top of the hour. Um, I'd like to move into a regular group meditation. Um, before we do that, do you have any uh, any sort of intention that you would like to specifically add to this meditation, something that you feel we sort of keep in mind? I'm trying to think. <laughs> My boyfriend just said good luck. Um, <laughs> how about we try to remember what it was like to first truly love ourselves and each other. You know, that love is a big topic for me. Right, right. Okay, so not not just the idea of, like, be love, but the idea of, like, res reflecting on, like, an element of, like, s like not just self-love, but, yeah. You know. <laughs> giggity, giggity. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not quite what I meant, but, yeah. Right, right, I know, I know. Listen. But, yeah, yeah, no, okay, okay, all right, okay, I see where you're going. Let's, like, on. reflect on that experience of love. And okay. to remember what it was like and to emanate it out. Yes, yes, true. Okay, so that genuine sense of, like, pure love and, like, remembering, like, what that is. Can, it could be from, like, a visceral experience that you've experienced in your life and then sort of uh, amplifying out 
that 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 uh, energy into the grid to to sort of say that like we want to love the earth grid as if it's like that first genuine love or something. Like hmm. Any experience but, of love, I think, is a valuable experience to be had. Very true. All right. So, um, okay. Now I do have a. Uh, in terms of meditation, I actually, let's see, okay, yeah, so I actually have it queued up to the root chakra, so it's going to be a root <laughs> chakra meditation this time, so this will be a very interesting one, um, this will be <laughs> very interesting. Now, what I was going to say, in addition to what we've already talked about, this, uh, let's like go into this meditation with the intention of like sort of that genuine love, um, I was also going to revolve it around the idea of taking that genuine love and then using it um, and putting it into, like, the physical acts that we have to do, uh, like, on this plane. Like, you know, like, the, the root chakra is very, like, grounded, oriented sort of thing. And, and part of the reason why I'm choosing it is to sort of, like, tie in with the whole, like, plant a seed project idea that I was talking about at the beginning of the show. Because, I mean, it's, you know, a lot of what we're doing right now, it begins in the ether. It sort of begins in that thought. But then it has to sort of crystallize into action at some point. So... Well, let's take that genuine love and let's work on crystallizing it into action so that we are no longer just like the thoughts of love, but rather we are becoming the actions of love. So, how's that sound? You with me? I'm with right. you. Okay, dude. Um, I'm actually, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm going to let you go for now, So you're welcome to call in again, and then after the uh, meditation, we'll, we'll bring on an, another buddy. But thanks for calling in, man. Really Thank appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Namaste. All right. See you, Fish. Okay. All right. So that said, guys, uh, we'll move into the meditation now. So I'll just uh, gently guide us into it. Um, that said, uh, yeah, no, we're we're good. We're good. You know, I'm just I'm keeping an eye on the live chat and stuff. There's a uh, there's only 27 of us in, in the live chat right now, and. Um, you know, the show sort of fluctuates in numbers, but the people who are here, the people who are listening are the people who are choosing to be here listening. So thank you guys for doing that. Thank you guys for tuning in. And, uh, you know, let's uh, let's see what, where we can take this. So um, this is definitely, this project, this radio show is an experiment in itself. And it's not something that I think I'll, like, handily have control over. So uh, let's, uh, yeah. Just big big shout out to all of you guys because I mean you know I can't I can't I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for you so big big uh big love towards you guys uh, I'm just gonna imagine myself like hugging everyone in the in the uh, live chat right now so all right guys so now that we got that out of the way let's move into our meditation all right so everyone just sort of get comfortable sit how you want to sit and um, again just reflecting back on the idea that I originally mentioned of genuine love. So you can almost reflect back, so far back, maybe even before this incarnation, when you just sort of existed in the warmthness of the ether, just in that abundance of warmth filling your body, that genuine love. So we want to take that experience, take that essence, and transmute it into action, into something that we will be doing within our physical community within the days and weeks and months to come, because there is a much work to do still ahead. So just take a deep breath in through the nose, and gently out through the nose as well. Three seconds in, three seconds out. Continue this rhythm. Continue to focus on love and crystallizing it into action.
gently allow yourself to be brought back into this reality by reconnecting with your breath. When you're ready, open your eyes. Just take another deep breath. Sort of let that sink in for a bit. All right, so like I said, that uh, that root chakra one, that one's got a nice ring to it. So obviously those audio, that's all uh, singing bowls and stuff. Singing bowls are definitely an interesting thing. If you don't, if you've never tried a singing bowl, go look for one. You'll probably be able to find one. I mean, maybe a friend has one. Maybe it's in like a uh, esoteric crystal shop somewhere down the street or something. But try it. Try it for yourself and actually be able to feel the real like vibrations of a singing bowl. I mean, it's one thing just listening to the uh, to the sound through through the computer here, but to actually feel and be in the presence of a singing bowl, like a crystal singing bowl even, whew, those are something. So, yeah. All right, guys. So that basically concludes another Psychic Saturday. We are now officially on to Sunday, which. Uh, I mean, Sunday, you know, in terms of the seven days of the week equaling the seven chakras, Sunday puts us uh, reconnecting to the crown chakra. So, um, yeah, just sort of keep that in mind, you know. Sunday, as we sort of rest for tonight and wake up tomorrow, just take that moment in. I mean, obviously, culturally, they sort of recognize it as like the Sabbath, so to speak. And it's, it is just a, a day where we get ready for that root chakra day tomorrow or the day after, which is Monday. You know, Mondays are red. So, But Sunday is that moment to sort of reconnect with your higher self, so to speak. So just sort of take the vibe from this show and carry it with you and let this just be a little healthy reminder to be a little bit more conscious of where you are tomorrow as you uh, prepare to move into the week ahead on a sort of a next level mental state. So, All right, guys. So with only about... 15, 16 minutes left on the show. If anybody else would like to call in and bring a topic onto the show, now would be the time, and feel free to do so using either Skype or actually call in using your real phone. And again, to do it through Skype is quite easy. If you're listening to the show already through the Block Talk Radio link, if you're logged in, you'll be able to scroll up to where the number is, and next to the number there's a Skype button, and press that, that'll bring you into the show, and then press 1, and that'll bring you on to the, uh, into the queue. So if nobody calls in within the next couple seconds at least, I do uh, have Vaughn Halford, who's been in the queue, and uh, I know he's got a story to share, so... I'm going to do that. I'm going to bring Vaughn on now. And if anybody else would like to join our conversation, that's totally welcome as well because we can do this with uh, multiple people so it doesn't just have to be me and Vaughn. But we'll get things rolling as well. So that said, Vaughn, I'm going to bring you on the air right about now. So here we go. Hello. Uh, Hello, Vaughn. You can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We'll do it. Loud and clear. Uh, Remind the people where you're from, where you're calling from. I am calling from Jacksonville, Florida, and I am Vaughn Halford of Horus Rising. Cool. And the Facebook for, there's a Facebook group, Horus Rising and Friends, right? Yes, I will post that later. But first, I really want to get this story out before I forget it again. Because I, oh. during the meditation, it kept popping up. I couldn't get out of my head, so I really couldn't even meditate. But <laughs> so It's all you. The platform is yours. Go ahead. All right. It's... I had this dream the other night, I think it was Wednesday night, and my fiancé was over, and my we fell asleep in a weird position because we were laying side by side, but my forehead was, like, against hers, like, for the whole night for some reason. And um, I had this really strange dream that happened. It was very lucid. I was very aware that I was not... I, I knew I wasn't awake but I mean, it was it was it was really I I I don't really like I have a lot of lucid dreams here and there, but this one was just really something weird happened. I met someone in the dream. There was this girl, and um, and she was very annoying. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. Like, it, like if that's but it, that's initially what she was. Like I thought that this girl was just like really loud mouth, and we were trying. I was with some people, and we were trying to get through somewhere. But then I realized that she could read everyone's mind in this dream, and 
for some reason I could too. I don't know, just part of the dream. But whenever someone would think something, it would be an instant karmatic reaction which would come out of her mouth. Like it's almost as if like the universe could hear you and your every thought. What would it tell you? And but except everything that came out of her mouth was just so honest that it almost it hurt everyone to hurt it. And I mean people were just obviously getting infuriated. I mean, every time she would say something, I mean, she would... It, it, so many things happen, it's hard to remember everything that happened in the dream. But one of the big things was um, somebody was being very, very depressed. And her reaction was, why don't you go ahead and kill yourself? And I was just like flabbergasted. Cause I'm like, why? Out of all the other things she had said, it kind of made sense. But then that, I was like, what? But I realized that like, what she was saying is everyone's projections of what they were going to be projecting themselves to. Like she was almost telling them what they would be doing in the near future. And it's really weird because like it really showed how much control everyone is of their own destiny. And I mean, like it's, it, this is something that gets recycled a lot, the whole thought, but it was really interesting to just see it happening in a stream like that and having an entity, which was actually speaking everyone's thoughts to them and freaking them out. And I mean, like, if that happened, it was they were reacting just like it would be in the real world, and it was it was I, it was just really strange. And I mean, like, I haven't really known what to take from that. I really wasn't sure why I had that dream, um, and it, it's just really been boggling me a lot. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, no, that that is that is interesting. Like, even just the uh, even just the idea that you know. Whether or not what you're actually seeing in this girl was actually like an actual entity or just like a projection uh, w within your dream, um, and now I'm not trying to like interpret this for you. I'm just uh, sort of like observing no, I'm, it. I'm, I want to hear what you have to say because I'm like I'm no, like, kind of lost. Like I don't. I mean, yeah. Like I mean, she was acting like a mirror, you know, you know in a lot of ways, and, and I think like that's potentially what we all have the capability to be for each other. Like, could you imagine if like everybody was psychic or something? Mm -hmm. And, and, and instead of like, you know, if someone sort of had a thought come to mind, you wouldn't really even have to like have like this conversation or something. You're getting uh, Sorry about someone, that. someone's messaging you. Yeah, yeah. Fix it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, like that's just like that. That actually, um, that scenario actually came up in the uh, movie that I saw tonight in Dread 3D because like it takes place in the future and actually uh, like the sidekick, like the the new rookie mm -hmm. cop. Is like with Judge Dredd, who's like, you know, a cop, obviously. She uh, has, like, psychic abilities. So that actually came into play within, like, the story of the film. It was, uh, you know, if there, if there was, like, a person who she ran into in the hallway right away, like, and the guy, like, had, um, you know, like, had, like, a, a gun or something, like, she would be able to, like, know the intention of that person, like, with, without actually having to, like, you know, it's just, it was just a really interesting concept, this whole uh, psychic ability thing. But, I mean, in the term of it happening on the dreamscape, um. Yeah, no, like that's. I, I, I'm not one really to interpret dreams, man. So I mean, I'm not really it's, too sure. It's cool. For some reason, I just felt like I had to share that. And yeah, um, the other thing was like I told you a little bit about it earlier, but um, as far as the paradigm uh, shift community, I'm going to be trying to start one here in Jacksonville, um, because there really isn't one here or anywhere around here. And uh, are you still there? Uh, yes. Okay, you cut out for a second. But, um, like like I said, we're doing some shows soon. What we're going to be doing during the shows is trying to show them things that will wake them up or make them... Just like when you were showing the signs in your video to people, like you're on the street corners with all these messages, which was really beautiful, by the way. Um, and you're making a weird noise now. Uh, still there? Yeah, I'm still here, but there's a weird feedback or something. I'll just talk over it if you can. Okay, but, um, yeah, I was planning on, uh, we're going to be showing them a lot of stuff. We're going to have a projector set up during our show, and we're also going to take time and possibly even have a meditation group and everything. And, um, it's, you know, we want to try and help start a community here, and we want to try and get as many people involved as we can. And so, like, I have a lot of um, close friends, and like I said in the last show that I was on, was that a lot of people around me, ever since I started going down the path that I've been going down, it's almost as if they've been starting to get sucked into that as well. And um, 
and so I can I can just see people changing around me, and it's happening very quickly. And and I'm it may not even be me, but it's just the whole world right now is changing, and yeah. it, it's starting to um hold on a weird noise, but it it's uh the the world's been like changing to the point where, and it's getting easier to talk to people about things which is really great because for the longest time it's been hard to try and reach out to people because they were so inclusive. And like in the video, you didn't get any negative responses. You got neutral and positive. You know, go back a few years, people would have been rejecting it. But now it's like it's becoming just everyone's like, yeah, that's right. We are a collective consciousness. You know, like they just know it. It's in their heart and they they don't even have an argument anymore for it. It's, it, you know, it's it's like the whole universe is dispelling um, dissonance and people are starting to wake up and you know I want to get as many people together to help everyone else join that waking process yeah, because it, yeah. it means so much when I had it, it it changed my whole life and everything is starting to get way better than I've ever lived in my entire life the only time I ever felt this great was when I was a child before all the other stuff clouded my vision you know yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think um, definitely what I'm interested in using my like, paradigm shift for, uh, you know, paradigm shift radio for, is like a discussion for what are some interesting creative ways that we can help uh, people wake up, so to speak. You know, what are some ways that we can engage with them uh, in, in a sort of community level? And and I I love what what you're doing because I mean, you guys like you're, I mean, for those who aren't entirely um, up to speed, like you're. Like, what type of music would you say you do? Like, would you say it's, like, hip-hop or whatever? It, it is hip-hop, but yeah, it's, as far as hip-hop is, it's more of the hip-hop culture as opposed yeah. to the genre people hear on television. We see it more as a culture, and rap being what we do, and hip-hop being how we live. But the original hip-hop, and um, I'm going to go ahead and speak about the Universal Zulu Nation, um, basically is a very open-minded... Um, it, 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 it dips itself into the new age, into facts, into everything. And a lot of people don't know that that's what hip-hop is about and about the community and everything and bringing people together and opening up minds was what it was yeah. originally about. People should look into Africa Bambata and learn more about what it is instead of... Because a lot of people are quick to dismiss it because the media turns hip-hop into um, just garbage. I mean, what you hear now is a bunch of stuff that, that is meant to close people's minds to make people stupid, but originally it was the exact opposite. And it still exists, but a lot of it's underground now. You won't hear it on the radio and you won't hear it on TV, much like everything else. I mean, even rock's like that now. It, it's just like the real music and the real message is hidden now. But, I mean, we've got the Internet, so there's no excuse. I mean, nothing's really hidden on the Internet. <laughs> Yeah, man. Like it's uh, I I think music is such like an excellent medium for for getting messages out there, and I'm glad that you guys are are doing that. I mean, I think um, you know, for any of the songs that I've heard from yours, like I I, I need I think I need to go back and just like read the lyrics, just just like on their own because I'm sure there's like stuff that's uh, not really coming through the first time, you know. Since, yeah, uh, we um we you're not the first person who said that. So what we did is on the separate sites where the songs are, we actually posted the lyrics. In fact, on the video, we have the lyrics yeah. for the first song. The second one wouldn't fit, so I went ahead and put it on the SoundCloud for it. But it's, I mean, like, yeah, our lyrics amaze me. Like, when I went back and read what I wrote, I couldn't believe that I wrote that. And the same goes yeah. for my for my partner um, in rhyme. But yeah, Jericho, he what he writes blows my mind. And he's, he's very in-depth into comedics and to all sorts of spiritual sciences. And he know and 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 what he channels when he writes, and the same goes for me, is is not even of us because I don't even always think like that. It's something uh -huh. else that speaks through me, and it just flows right out. I don't actually all the stuff that we write, we literally wrote it in about five minutes, maybe less. Like we really? just, it just came right out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know, that's as as artists in, in a lot of ways, like we are like catalysts for. Uh, mm -hmm. There's, there's again, this like this consciousness is trying to communicate with itself, and through us, like we create like art, and then like through art, you know, you, you sort of create inspiration and get messages out there. But yeah, sort of explain to me a bit more, man. Like, I mean, like what type of stuff are you guys writing about in your songs? Like, what what messages are there? Um, sometimes I've noticed in the song it'll start from a message that comes from me, and then as it stretches on into something else. But like a lot of the times, I try to focus on what has really been on my mind. And like for recently, like the recent songs, um, I was talking about 
in the beginning of my verse, I was talking about how I've lost a lot of friends recently to things that were beyond my control. But I mean, like, that's really hard for me to explain. I'll go to Devin Ave. Uh, we, we made a song called Devin Ave, which is a remix of someone else's instrumental that gave us approval for it. But um, it... As the entire song is talking about a bunch of spiritual concepts, and a lot of it's actually discussed in spirit science and Drumbelow Malchizedek's works. But I mean, like, uh, we are, I also talk about stuff that I have in dreams, and um, one of those being um, there's um, this reoccurring dream I had where there was this woman who had a glowing eye in the middle of her head. The the third eye was glowing red, and she had long white hair. And she told me that I had a message that I had to give. And I wouldn't have much time to give it, but I have to now. Like, it wasn't that, it was, there was a big sense of urgency. And that was around the time where everything changed for me. Like, I started having these dreams every single night. And ever since, like, there has not been a single night unless, like, I, I don't remember the dream at all. But usually every night that I dream, it's completely lucid. And there's always some underlying message. And it's weird because I wasn't, I'm not used to that. And, um, but, a lot of what in my dreams comes out of my music, a lot of what the message I try to get to people, which is unity, connectedness, and love. Right. And um, which the world needs more of. I'm, I'm just so tired of the fact that so many people fill their head with distractions when, you know, music is supposed to make us search for questions, not distract us for moments of time. A lot of people are getting caught up and distracting themselves with every single moment they can, whether it's with Facebook or movies or television or the radio. They're just constantly just trying to get through these minutes to get to the next day to do the same thing again. And it was, you know, that's not what it's supposed to be about. And I feel like the last 20 years, it's almost like some controlling figure of the world has been trying to get everybody to stop focusing on waking up, even though it's happening, whether they want it to or not, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's an interesting thing, man. And I think that's a topic we'll have to get into for another show. I mean, this whole idea of, you know, call them the Illuminati or, or whatever you want, but the I've Illuminati. thought of, yeah, that's what I, that's actually what I do call them. But I mean, that's actually something that I've thought about before, you know, like that they are playing like this necessary this necessary role where in order for consciousness to really grow, it sort of like has to go through this buffer. And that's mm-hmm. sort of like a word that's been used a couple times tonight. But I mean, that's sort of like what they're doing is that like, you know, if, if like we're not at that point where society is like ready to encourage the whole consciousness shifting phase, like it sort of has to happen from a mm-hmm. grassroots. And so it sort of has to like go through the darkness and, and, and be like that, that plant growing up through the cracks sort of thing, because that's, what's really going to prove to itself. You know, like, we are playing a video game here, but we're playing on hard mode. Like, why would we be playing it on easy mode? Like, that doesn't make sense, you know? Like, if hard mode is the most difficult, then do that the first time, so to speak. So I think the biggest deal, which is a lot with what you're doing, with separate communities, with your paradigm shift central, and then having all these other paradigm shift Mm -hmm. communities, it's extremely important, because if people don't care about their communities first, there's no way we're going to be able to tackle it as a whole. You cannot just send a beacon out and change the whole world. You have to start in your own community, with your neighbors, with the people around you. A lot of people, I mean, an easy analogy is when people um, focus on a president, but not the local state representatives and their governor and their mayor and what actually affects them. They always want to think that everything matters by one thing. Then they can sit back and just let the dice roll with someone else's problem. But as everything is being affected by us individually, like every Every dollar you spend is a vote for who you want to rule the world. Well, that goes with the same with your mind and every thought you have and yeah. what you think about everyone around you and what they think about you. And until you focus on what's around you, there's no way we're going to be able to change globally. And I yeah. think that it's finally around the time where people are figuring that out, which is why all these grassroots and things are right, popping dude. up everywhere. We got to cut off because I think the show is pretty much over and as we're like hitting our limit here. So, I mean, I think we're probably literally going to be cut off uh Yeah, I think at this point, so I mean, I'm not even sure if we're like on airspace right now, but that said, since I think this does go into the recording as well, it will end up on the YouTube, but I think the people in the live chat might have lost us. Yeah, I I just just saw that. Yeah, I was just going to say, 
for those who are listening to this in the recording, thanks for tuning in again. And uh, feel free to check out all of the links. Go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com. Go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash plant a seed for the plant a seed project that we were talking about earlier. Get that video out there if you haven't checked it out yet because getting it out there is going to get more people involved and it's going to help strengthen the grid basically. But uh, that said, for those of you who are uh, tuned into the recording and unfortunately we didn't say goodbye to our friends in the live chat, thank you for listening to this again. And I'm sorry for running you over. Ah, it's all right, man. <laughs> it's all good. So it is important what you said was important. So at least it exists in the recording. But thanks again, guys. And Vaughn, say your uh, farewells for the night. Yeah, bye, everyone. I'm Vaughn Halfer from Horse Rising. Check us out at horserising.com. Cool. All right. And I'm Skull Babylon. So check me out at uh, facebook.com slash Skull Babylon, youtube.com slash Skull Babylon, Paradigm Shift London.com, or uh, facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift London, et cetera, et cetera. And keep doing your job out there by listening and learning every single day. And just to end with a quote, this is an African proverb or an, an Australian or Australian Aboriginal proverb. Here goes. We are all visitors to this time, this place. We are just passing through. Our purpose here is to observe, to learn, to grow, to love, and then we return home. So there you go, little words of insight. And that said... We're ending the show. So thanks again, guys. Thanks, Vaughn. And we'll see you in the future. Take care, everyone.